How's it going YouTube? Part 2 of our Chrono Genesis card review here. We've had some really good reprints in this set, some not so good reprints. The card review has been a lot of fun though, I hope you guys are enjoying it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Alright, this is part 2 of our Chrono Genesis card review. Before we can start the second part of the review, I suppose we gotta go over the new keywords that are both for Shadow. Uh, so Bureau Wright says, if you have a follower in your hand and an open space in your area, Put that follower into play, that follower loses all effects, and then it is destroyed. So what is the point of right? Uh, point of right is to get a minion from your hand into your graveyard, right? And why you want to do this is because you can then reanimate them with the second keyword. Now, because they lose all the effects, they are essentially silenced. So let's say you burial right Mordecai, you would not get a Mordecai on the board because he lost his effects, right? Reanimate says, randomly summon a copy of one of the highest cost followers that has been destroyed during this match and costs less than or equal to the, re the reanimate value. Uh, so, important to note here is that if I understand this correctly, and I apologize if I don't, but let's say I play a 2-drop that Burrow writes a card. Let's say I destroy Bahamut. I can't then just reanimate Bahamut on turn 3. Because it has to cost less than or equal to the reanimate value, right? Which then brings the question, if you can't cheat out followers of highest play points, then what is the point of it, right? And I don't know, but we'll find out. First we have Gloomy Necromancer, a Shadowcraft Bronze, 2 play point 2 one so below curve stats, 1 health is kind of weak for a 2 drop. Uh, fanfare, Bureau Right, draw a card. So, a 2 play point 2 1 draw a card is good. You get to Bureau Right, so you get to put one of your cards from your hand into your graveyard. And I guess in the Shadow deck that wants to do this, this is a good thing. So, in that deck, you're developing your game plan of putting shit in your graveyard while at the same time drawing a card and getting a 2 1 on the board, which seems good on paper. I don't know if that. Is good enough like is Bureau Right a positive or a negative? I can't tell. It like to me it seems like a negative because you lose a card in your hand. Obviously, you can then resummon it, but you can't cheat it out, so I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. I guess in the deck that wants to Bureau Right their cards, this card is good, right? Okay, next we have Skull Ring, a three play point Shadowcraft amulet, countdown two. Fanfare summon two skeletons, which are 1-1s. One Last word, Necromancy 2, Reanimate 2. So, there's a lot of 2s here. Um, assuming I understand this correctly, so the way Reanimate 2 works is you get one of your 2 cost or lower followers back from your grave. Right? Like, you can't reanimate anything higher than that. And for you to reanimate something, you need to pay 2 Necromancy. Which is not hard because two skeletons will give you two shadows. So you're playing three play points for two one ones right now, and in two turns you get like a two two basically. Is that good enough for a three drop? I'm going to say no. It's a lot of shadows in one card because the amulet also gives you a shadow, but then the necromancy takes you two shadows. Like, you can only get a tutor from this, right? So, I don't know. Maybe it's not that great. Okay, next we have So Death, Reap Life. A Shadowcraft Gold spell. Reanimate X. This value equals to your current turn number. Okay, so... You can't play this before turn 5. So, let's say it's turn 5 and you play this. For 5 play points, you get back a 5 drop or less. But you need to have had a 5 drop or less died for this to be good, otherwise you're summoning like a 2 drop or something, right? Of course, through the right, you probably put like a 5 drop in your graveyard. Uh, maybe the value of this is you hold it, so that, like the cost doesn't go up, but the value does. So let's say you play this on turn 10, you're playing 5 play points, 
but now you're summoning a 10 drop and that's pretty good especially if the minion that you're summoning is something that has like a lot of value something that you want to replay like you play it on seven after you've dry, uh, killed a kiwi you get a kiwi back and that's pretty strong but I don't, I don't know man like without Mordecai and stuff like that Like, do you want to reanimate, like, a Bahamut for, like, the sheer stats? Or are we trying to reanimate something for the effect then? I guess this card has, this card has versus, uh, uh, you know, it has a, a lot of flexibility, right? You can, uh, you can play around 5 and get a 5 drop or hold it and get better battle later on. And that makes it better than if it was just, like, a summon a 10 drop or something, right? Okay, next we have Icarus, a Portal Craft, Silver, 2 play point two two, good stat-wise. Fanfare, put two Ancient Artifacts into your deck. Evo, put a random artifact from your deck into your hand. Uh, that seems pretty good. I believe Ancient Artifacts is a 2 play point two one last for shot card. But I could be wrong on that. Someone uh, double check with me. But essentially, it's putting Artifacts into your deck. Which is good, right? Your deck wants to do that. Uh, it doesn't proc or unproc your resonance, so that's good to note. But if you Evo, you get an Artifact into your hand. So, let's say you're not in resonance. You play this, you put two, you're still on resonance, you evil, you draw one, and then you are in resonance. Which is good. Like two play point two two evil four four is standard. This gets uh an added effect on top of that. And even if you don't evil it, you put artifacts into deck, which is not bad, right? So all in all seems decent. Seems like a two drop that you could consider for your portal craft artifact decks and i think that's good enough right doesn't seem broken doesn't, doesn't doesn't seem bad either okay next we have gravity kinetic warrior a portal craft bronze four play point three four minion okay stat wise fanfare randomly put two of the following cards into your deck the analyzing artifact the ancient one the mystic one or the radiant uh radiant one is the super broken one the five play one four three storm so the fact that you have a chance to get it is already pretty good We've seen this effect on the 2-drop, and I, I thought that card was really, really good. And this is like the same thing, but around 4-drop, so I'm going to say it's good. On Evo, you put a random artifact from your deck into your hand. So just like with the other card that I thought about, this card is good because it lets you control whether you want to be in resonance or not. And I think that's probably strong. On Evo, you draw a card, which is good. Uh, this is like an Evo effect, but you still get plus 2, plus 2, so that's good. I think putting artifacts into your deck is good. The fact this puts one of the best ones instead of like some mediocre ones, I think is good. So I'm going to say this card is just good all around. Uh, next we have Magna Legacy, a Portal Craft Legendary, the second one. I can say I don't like the art. It's like a city. That's boring to me. I'm not feeling it. But the card is an 8.66, so uh, below average stats, but not terrible. Fanfare deal X damage to all enemy followers. This value equals the number of allied artifacts card destroyed during this match. You can compare this to Mitral Golem, which was a big dude that cleared your opponent's board. Uh, Mitral Golem never really saw any play, it wasn't really good enough. Uh, however, this card might. I feel like it's very easy for you to have a good amount of artifacts destroyed in an artifact deck, which is the only reason you would play this. Uh, compare this to the Haven Landary, 7 play point 2 3 the LP. You're playing one more play point here for a 6 6. And doing probably, I'm going to assume, between 3 to like 6 damage maybe. And that's not bad. Like, if Shadowverse becomes a game in which fighting for the board and having a board is important, then board clears like this become good. Will Shadowverse become that game? Uh, maybe it's hard, too hard to predict right now. But if the game does slow down and people do fight the board and contest the board and battle the board, then a card like this is good. 6-6 six, six is not bad stats. Doing a bunch of area damage is not bad at all. Definitely played in like control portal craft, I guess. It does answer the board though, so that, that's nice. I, I like this card. I actually do like this card. I don't like the art though, but I think the effect is fine. Alright, next we have Hak Ravi, a portal craft gold. 5 play point four four. Uh so below stats, but not not by much. Fanfare, put a random artifact from your deck into your hand. Repeat once if Resonance is active for you. So we see a lot of cards that put artifacts into your deck, 
This is a card that puts them from your deck into your hand. Uh, if you play this and you only draw one artifact, then I don't think it's that strong. If you're in Resonance and you draw two, then that's pretty reasonable. Like a 5 play point four four draw two is good, dare I say. 5 play point four four draw one is playable. 5 play point four four draw two is good. You're drawing artifacts, which maybe is good. Like, artifacts are strong, right? You want to get them out of your deck so you can use them. Uh, it seems good. I don't know. Like, maybe there will be better fight drops for Portal Cat to play. But this doesn't seem like a bad card at all. It doesn't seem like a bad card. I kind of like it. Even if you're not in Resonance, it's not the worst. And if you're in Resonance, then it's just good. So, this looks solid. Okay, next we have Biofabrication, a Portal Craft Zero Cost spell. I want to say this is the first Zero Cost card in Shadowverse's history. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Subtract one from the cost of an artifact or of an artifact card in your hand. Put three copies of that artifact into your deck. Uh, interesting. Because it costs zero and it's giving you cost reduction as well. And that seems strong. Like, that alone seems pretty good. You're putting copies of more artifacts into your deck. So although this card has quote-unquote low value, your deck is filled with value anyway. It also puts three copies, so that means if you're not in Resonance, you go to Resonance. And if you are in Resonance and you want to be out of it for whatever reason, then you will be out of it. So that's good. Like, you could play this as a counterfeit coin, quote-unquote. Would that be good enough just to get good, like, cheat-out tempo? I don't know. I mean, if you're playing the Deuce aggressive deck and you want to just bomb it stuff on the board, this lets you do that, right? Just you want to just use all your hands every turn because you're going to draw six. I don't know. Seems good. Maybe not every single Portalcraft deck will play this, but if you want to be aggressive, being able to cheat at play points is reasonably strong. So I think this is not bad. Next we have Nova Flare, a Runecraft Gold spell. Four play point deal two damage to all followers. So interesting to note is that one, it's all followers. Uh, two is that usually three play point. We talk about this a lot. Like three play point is the equivalent of doing one damage to all enemy followers. Here you're playing one extra play point to do two damage, but you damage your own followers. Now if you're playing a deck that is doesn't have their own followers, like. Not D-Shift, because my review are only talking about rotation, right? So, I don't know. If you have a deck where you don't have followers, so you don't care about your followers, then I guess doing 2 damage is fine and you don't care. Or you can always trade appropriately, and then clean up with this. Is 2 AV damage worth it? I think it's one of those cards where, like, while not a bad card, it's, it's just going to depend on the meta, right? Like, 2 AV damage is good, because 2 damage clears all 2 twos, right? And every deck plays 2 twos, basically. Or the majority of decks play 2-2s. Two so probably we'll always find some relevance. I guess it just gives runes another option if they want more clear, more AoE. I don't think it's particularly like insane or anything like that. But again, not ass. And I think that's good. I want to see cards that are not broken but are not garbage. Can we find that sweet middle ground? Where you have to think about what cards you want to put in your deck. As opposed to just automatically like, oh, I must play three of these cards. Or that card is garbage, I would never play that card, right? Like, let's let's get that nice middle ground. And I think this card is in the middle ground. Okay, next we have Accolade, a Swordcraft, Silver, one play point spell. Give an allied follower clash, draw a card. Change that follower into a commander follower if they're an officer. So this card lets you cycle itself because... You're going to place an immediate attack and then instantly draw a card. So it cycles itself. It cycles itself. The benefit is that you can turn your officers into commanders. How relevant is having a commander on the board? And how relevant will that be post-rotation? I feel like it's really not. Maybe they're trying to put more specific commander or officer... Synergy? Right now, I feel like that doesn't really do anything. Like, yes, you cycle this card, but you're playing one play point. 
I guess if you trade over something and you Venus survives and they have to trade back, then maybe you draw two cards and that's good. How often is that happening? Maybe if you're like desperately in these commanders on the board for a reason, then this is good. Uh, I don't I don't really like it though. Not a bad idea as a card, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Next we have Crimson Bow Elf, a Forest Craft Silver. 3 play point 2 3, good stat wise. No effect without evolution. On evil, you deal 2 damage to random X follower enemy. Deal 2 damage to X random enemy followers. X equals the number of cards played this turn, including this follower. Maximum 5 random enemy followers. So my question is, and I don't know how this works, so maybe you guys can check and help me out. Does this only do 2 damage to a minion once? Like, if it hits a minion, does it then hit another random minion? Or can it hit the same minion twice? From the way it's worded, I don't know, but I, I feel like Kirby probably knows. But I, I like this card. It's like a conditional Ancient Elf or Ancient Lion Spirit from Haven, right? Historically, 4 is does 1 damage for AoE, like Cassipia does 1 damage, Will of Force does 1 damage. This card is doing 2, and it counts itself. So, let's say turn 5, you play a 2 drop, you play this, you evo it, you get a 3-4 and you do 2 damage twice. Let's say you play Fairy Fairy this, you do 2 damage 3 times. It doesn't seem bad, but is this good enough? And I don't know that it is, but it's a cool card though, I kind of like it. I don't know, it doesn't seem too insane though, and I'm not sure I truly understand how it works either. Next we have Dungeon Explorer Chloe, a neutral, neutral card, 3 play point 3 2, so good stat wise. Fanfare, give another allied follower the ability to ignore ward. Uh, Shadow had a card like this in the past, a 1 play 1 1 with the same effect. Uh, so this is just for neutral, so anybody can ignore wards now. I guess if your combo relies on like some sort of like very specific storm, and you could spare 3 play points in your combo, you can play this. And in that case it'd be good, but otherwise, I don't think so man. Like. Usually your three play point minions uh, are they doing something that your deck needs, right? If your deck wants to ignore wards, then you're probably trying to smork. But I don't know, there's probably better aggro cards for like any deck to play. Maybe in some sort of combo deck where you absolutely must be able to get over wards. But I don't see that. I don't like this card, it's kind of boring to me. I'm not a fan. Alright, here we go. Next we have Asi, the Haka. Uh, I hate this card. I really, really dislike this card. Giantcraft Legendary, 10 play point 6 8, Storm. Whenever an knowledge follower evolves, subtract one from the cost of this card. Evo Storm. I, I really dislike this card. I don't think anybody can argue that this is a bad card. As just look at Genesis. Genesis is a good card. And this is basically Genesis. The reason why I dislike this card is because we've seen a lot of reprints. Some of them are like spiritual reprints where it's like the same card and different effect. Some of them are like sort of the same effect, right? Uh, this card is basically a Genesis reprint. Yes, it has one less attack and that is relevant. I'm not saying that's not relevant. One less attack is relevant. But it's essentially the same thing, right? It functions the same as Genesis. It's going to do the same thing as Genesis did. And this bothers me because part of the rotation and part of why I'm excited for rotation is because... I'm tired of playing against the same decks over and over for the past year and a half. And I want to play against new, fresh, exciting decks with new game plan, new game ideas. And the rotation means that the classes leave their stuff behind and they move on to something new. When they reprint a card like this, it lets Dragon keep doing what they were doing before. So they could still do the Queen combo. They could still just ramp into some big storm. It's just the same shit that they've done for so long. And I wanted them to do something different basically. I don't like this card. The reprints are fine, but when they reprint cards like Genesis, Roach, Disha, Forte, cards that we wanted, like primary cards that needed to be out, uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. And that's ignoring the whole subtract one from the cost of this card. If that card, if this card set didn't have that, it'd still be a good card. But for some reason, if you evil this card costs less. So let's say you evil twice, it'll go to eight. Let's say you ramp, 
So you could be playing this on like somebody's turn six as a six eight and then just you know storming the face. I don't like this card. I don't like this card. It's obviously really really good. We had hoped that the parallel game had gone down or was going to go down in the rotation. And I still hope that that's true. But I look at this card and I just see Genesis and I just get sad, man. I really want to see what Dragon would do without Forte without Genesis. Ah, uh, I don't like this card. I don't like this card one bit. Next we have Pure Annihilation, a Heavencraft Silver Spell, 5 play points. She's an enemy follower, banish it, and all enemy followers have the same name. Uh, so this is like Power Creep, Acolyte's Light. Acolyte's is a 5 play point card that says banish enemy follower. This is the same thing, but if they happen to have more of the same dudes, they also get banished. Acolytes never really saw any play. Maybe Alienation will. Usually if you're using Hard Mole on this, you're using it like one big dude. Um, more than likely you will probably not get enough value and hit a bunch of dudes. I guess this makes it better against Aggro because you can like use it as AoE if they have like a bunch of the same dudes. I mean it's better than Acolytes Light. Acolytes Light is not the worker in the world so yeah, maybe it's good enough. We'll have to see what Haven chooses for their removal post rotation, right? I guess they'll have this option, and that's not a not a terrible card. Next we have Mysteria the Magic Founder, the Runecraft Legendary. Mysteria trait. Well uh, we'll talk about that, but interesting that Rune got a new trait, right? 5.144, so although below stat wise on curve, uh, only very slightly, still pretty decent stats. Fanfare give you literally the following effect. Your spells deal one damage. This lasts for the rest of the game. I think this is a very powerful effect. Uh, spell damage not really seen in Shatterburst aside from Dragon Pendant. And Pendant was an amulet that basically gave you this. This card gives you this effect, but it gives you a 4-4 on the board as well. And while Dragon, not known for the great spells, uh, Rune is the spell class and they have all the spells, right? So I think spell damage is more powerful in rune. This gives me a 4-4 which is also more powerful. Uh, you can also stack this. So let's say you play two of these. Your spells will do two more damage and everything. This means all your AoE is significantly better. Uh, all your phase damage gives you a lot more reach. I think this card is really really good. It also has a Mysteria trait. So if that becomes a thing. Then that's a plus on this card. So I think it's pretty cool. I think I, think I do like the design. Like I said, we really hadn't seen spell power in Shadowverse before. And I think it's a pretty cool mechanic, so I'm down for it. The fact that Rune gets it, I'm also okay with. I like this card. I think it's really good, and I like it. Good job, side games. <laughs> Alright, next we have Mysterion Summoner Bailey. Another Runecraft uh, Mysterion Minion. 3 play point 2 2, so below static minion. Whenever you play a Mysterion card, and I assume that this counts minions and spells, right? It's just as cards. Summon a Bunnycorn Nick Nick. If you, there isn't an allied Bunnycorn Nick Nick in play, same effect when you're evil. So, what is a Bunnycorn Nick Nick? Bunnycorn Nick Nick says, last word, spell boost the cards in your hand. Okay, so you play Bailey on three. Or maybe you don't play her on three. Maybe you play her when you can play a Mysterio card. Which gives you a 2-2 two, two, and a 1-1 one, one, and 2 bodies, which is fine. And then the bunny dies, he spell boosts the cards in your hand. And maybe that is good. I don't know how the Mysteria deck will really function. But I guess it's Mysteria support. It's hard to rate this card. I don't think it's bad. It's a matter of like how good the Mysteria deck is or like how much support they have together. And I guess we'll find out as we rate the rest of the cards. Hmm. Okay, so next we have Mysterious Knowledge. A one play point uh, Mysterious Spell. So the spells cancel with Mysteria. Randomly put one of the flying cards into your hand. Mysterious Missile or Mysterious uh, Circle. Uh, well, this boosts your hand. Put some Mysterious card in play, basically. If you need to proc your Mysterious effects. And it gives you a spell, which we will get to. Uh, so again, without knowing much of the Mysterion archetype, I can say that right now I kind of like the archetype. I think it's cool if they want to go down that route, where just release a bunch of cards that work together, as opposed to just like, oh, it's spell boost, right? Like, 
it's Mysterian, it's whatever. Like, I'm down for that. More diversity, right? And I guess, have they not really shown those cards? Okay, here they are. Let me let me go over these cards first. So, Missile says, deal 3 damage to every follower, deal 1 to every leader. So, 2 play when deal 3 damage is good, deal 1 damage to every leader is good. Imagine you play this with the spell damage, because now we should always consider the spell damage, right? 2 play when deal 4 is really good, deal 2 to the face, really good. So, Missile's good. Seems like a solid Mysterian card. All around good spell. Circle says, summon a clay golem. Give ward to all allied clay golems. So it gives you a 2 play point 2 to ward. If you have other golems, they also gain ward. I think I like the missile better. Circle seems like... Like there's the basic rune card that's a 2 play point summon a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, that card definitely saw some play back in the day. But I think these days you want to play better things. So maybe you play missile instead. Is the card random? The the one play point card. It is random. Hmm. I feel like you always want the missile, but I don't know. Like I guess the two play one two two ward is not bad. It is still a spell. It's still a mystery card. I like the art type. We'll have to see how it actually ends up functioning. Okay. Next we have Mister Bertrand, the Magic Mentor, another mystery card. 2 play 1 2 2, so good stat wise. Last words if you played an Arm Mysterio card this turn, randomly put one of the following cards into your hand, either Missile or the Circle. On Evo, same thing. So, as a 2 play point 2 2, last words draw a card. And not from your deck, but like draw a card from nowhere, right? And that card has Mysterious Synergy because you're playing this in a Mysterious deck. That's really good. Uh, the problem is, if you play this on your turn, like, if you play this turn 2, you're not getting anything. If you play this turn 3, and you play a Mysterio card, you get the last words, but then they kill them in their turn where you've not played a Mysterio card, and then you don't get anything, right? I feel like this is hard to get this effect. Okay, maybe you play this on 2, going first, they play their 2-drop, turn 3, you play a Mysterio card, and then you trade, and you get your card, and you draw the card. Maybe that's how you're supposed to play this dude. Because if your opponent kills it, you're not going to draw a card, right? It's only when you are able to sack him and he doesn't have a rush. Maybe it's still good enough. I don't know how much, how many Mysterio cards there will be. If you have enough choices where, like, you can pick between a lot of 2 drops, then maybe this is not the one you play. But if you don't have a lot of choices for Mysterio 2 drops, then maybe you'll just have to take what you can get. Uh, when this effect does prop for this card, it is pretty strong, so there's that. Okay, next we have Class President Hamsa. A Runecraft Mysteria Gold, 5 play 4 4. Not the best stat wise, but not bad at all. 4 4 is reasonable. At the end of your turn, put one of the following cards into your hand Missile or Circle. So it seems like a lot of Mysteria cards just give you Missiles or Circle. Which is good because you get like a lot of free Missiles, which is a lot of free value, right? If you played a Mysteria card this turn, put a Mysteria right into your hand instead. And it was the same thing. So this card guarantees you, draws you one card, which is fine. Like we were talking before, like a 5 play point 4 4 draw card is okay. It synergizes with your deck, so it gets another plus on top of that. If you get a Mysterian Right instead, how better is that? Mysterian Right says, 5 play point. Whenever you play a Mysterian card, if this card costs 5 play points, change your cost to 3. The all 3 damage to enemy minions, summon a Guardian Golem. Alright, so for 5 play points, this card is not that great, right? For 3 play points, it's pretty insane. Like, deal 3 damage and get a 3-3 ward. Could be deal 4 damage you have spell power. This card seems pretty good. Because in a Mysterio deck, you will always have Mysterio cards. So you can essentially think of this as a 3 play point for the effect, and that's pretty good. I guess it's like the combination of the Missile and the Circle. Because it's doing damage, and it's also giving you a ward. So that's pretty cool thematically. So if this card gives you a missile or a circle, then I guess it's like decent. If you get the right, it's like really good. And I guess it's not that hard to proc that because your whole deck is Mysterio cards. So again, I do like this card. I think it's solid. I still, we still can't say the Mysterio deck will be any good at all. But I like the design and I think they're not bad cards at all. I do like them. Next we have Silver Blade Golem, the other Runecraft Legendary. It's an 8 play point 6-6. Six, six. So, below stat, but not by much. It's got ward. 
Fanfare, transform each Earth Sigil amulet into your hand into a Burdig Ritual. Fanfare, Earth Ride, put a Burdig Ritual into your hand and repeats for all the Sigils you have. And the Ritual says, deal 3 damage to an enemy, Earth Ride, draw a card. The best or the easiest comparison we can make from this card is Rose Queen. As you guys may or may not know, but Rose Queen was my, uh, Rose Queen is still my favorite deck that we've ever played in all of Shadowverse. It was a deck that we primarily got mastered with. It was the most fun that I've had playing this game. I like Rose Queen a lot. The people will tell you Rose Queen was never meta, or it wasn't ever too good. I will tell you that they're probably right, but we made Rose Queen work. We won a lot of games with that shit. It was not that bad back in the day. And this is like a better Rose Queen. For starters, Rose Queen was an 8 play 5 5 This is an 8 play 6 6 It also has Ward, so it's instantly more defensive. While some of you would play Rose Queen and they would just kill you, 6-6 uh, six, six Ward fights the board. Now, instead of transforming fairies, you transform Sigils. And cool thing about this card is that you turn Sigils into your hand, but also Sigils on the board as well. So, essentially, you're going to play this, and then the hope is that you can kill them next turn with the Rituals. Also not to note about the Rituals is that they Earth Ride draw a card. So, like, if for whatever reason you have extra clunky Sigils, like, the, the Golem will make sure you always have use for them, which is pretty good. Uh, the on 3 damage for 2 play points is pretty solid, of course. They can go face. So, let's say you get 5 of these, which is the maximum you can play in one turn. You were doing 15 damage, and that's not bad at all. Now, because Rune has the spell damage card, the new legendary, uh, you could play 4 damage for each one. So, if you have that card, and you're doing a spell damage, and you get 5 rituals, you could do 20 damage to your opponent's face from no board in one turn. That's pretty good. Now, you can think of this like sort, of, it's like sort of like a combo card, right? I think it'll be good in like a control deck, though. It gives the Earth Sigils a finisher. And I, dare I say, a pretty strong one at that. I like this card a lot. Again, it's one of those cards where as soon as I say this card, my brain's already thinking, I'm starting to theorize, like, okay, we play the Spellbus card, you play this, so you kill the turn after. How do we set up for this? How is that going to function? What are we going to play? Like, my, I start thinking, and I, that's what I want to see. Those are the cards that I like. Uh, this card seems good to me. I'm a little bit biased because I, I love Rose Queen. I truly, truly love Rose Queen. So I'm a little bit biased. This is like the Rose Queen reprint, basically. So we're going to make this shit work. But I don't think it's bad. Like, I don't even say that. Like, I think it is a solid good card. Most of the time, you probably not, don't need enough Rituals to to get your opponent. Like, if you could do 9 damage burst or 12, that's still pretty good. I like this card a lot. All right. Next we have Imperial Swordsman, not a sword card, it's a portal craft card, 8 play points, 6-6 six, six gold, at the end of your turn deal 2 damage to the enemy leader, if resonance is active for you deal 4 damage instead, same effect on evil. There's a shadow card that does 4 damage to the enemy leader for 7, for necromancy, and I don't even think that's his place in Agril's shadow anymore. Like, this is an aggressive card, right? But an aggro deck would not play this because it costs 8. Or would a, would a control deck play this because they're trying to finish? The thing is, like, as a control deck, dealing 4 damage gives you some extra burst. But it's not like it's a real win condition, right? Like, if you're playing this in a slow portal craft deck, I have to imagine there's other better win conditions. Like Noah and Puppeteer's burst and stuff like that. I mean, it does have stats, so it can still fight the board. But I, I have to imagine there's better stuff you can play. 4 damage is a good amount of damage. Usually, like, the more burst you have, the better burst becomes, right? Like, if your deck can do a lot of random 3 damage, then that adds up quickly, right? But if you just play a slow control deck, and I can have 4 damage randomly, I just don't know how impactful that is. It gives Worldcraft some reach. Don't they have better ways to do that though? Like wouldn't you rather storm them in the face with the artifact? Wouldn't you rather puppeteer storm them with Noah? I feel like there's gotta be better cards than this guys. I don't think I like them. Next we have Toy Soldier. 
Portalcraft Bronze, 3 play point two one, so below average stats. Fanfare, put a puppet into your hand. Uh, Evo, when a puppet comes into play, give it plus one attack. We looked at some of the puppet cards in my last review, and the puppet thing will definitely be an archetype, probably where they try and finish with Noah's Storm. There's a couple cards that give puppets into your hand. Some of them are definitely better than others. You're making a weak tempo play to get a puppet into your hand. And I don't know if that's what the deck wants to do. But it's another option for you to get puppets into your hand. And if you absolutely need more puppets then you have this option. It's not like it's a terrible card. Uh, the Evo effect. Probably not too relevant. But maybe if you're like... You play this guy in 4 and you evil because you got to fight the board. You can play a puppet and then the puppet could trade better. Puppets have rush, right? If I remember? I don't know. I don't particularly like this card, but I don't think it's awful. Next we have Flower Doll, a 2 play point one two Again, below stat of minion. Last words, if you have at least 4 cards in your hand, put a puppet in your hand. If you have at least three cards or less in your hand, put a puppet and a flower doll into your hand. Uh, same effect on Evo. So essentially, you're always going to draw something from this. Either you get a puppet, or you get a puppet and a flower doll. If you are being super aggressive, and you're playing your hand out so you don't have lower cards in hand, then you'll get a puppet and you'll get her back, so you can replay her. If you have a lot of cards, you'll get a puppet. Like the puppet card seems like they're paying stats or play points for you to get those puppets. The question is how worth it is that? Like sacrificing one attack on your two drop is actually pretty big. Would you play a two play point one two that gives you a puppet? Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't though. Like okay this has the other nice effect where if you're a really long card you can get her back. Which will get you at least another puppet and that's sort of nice. But how often is that happening? On turn 2, you'll probably have more than 3 cards in hand. And I guess if you top this in late game and you have no cards, then you'll get value. But at that point, if you're late game and you're top decking 2 drops, that's below stats, then like that's bad anyway. So I'm not sure I like this card. But again, another option if you absolutely need puppets in your hand. Okay, here we go. This is an exciting card. Next we have our Ar Aria, Guiding Fairy, Forest Craft, Legendary, 4 play from 3-3. Fanfare, put a fairy wisdom into your hand. Enhance 9, put fairy wisdom into your hand till it is full. Evo, put a fairy wisdom into your hand. And a fairy wisp is a 0 play point 1 1 that gets banished if you play at least 2 other cards this turn. I like this card because this is both the Princess Mage reprint while at the same time being the fairy princess uh, reprint. So for that, I give them, you know, props to side games. This card is cool. Of the bad, it's already better than fairy. Uh, Prince of the Mage, because if you play some 4 and you avoid, you get 2 zero cost fairies, but this is a 5-5, five five, while Prince of the Mage is a 4-5. On top of that, if you draw Prince's Mage in a late game, it's just a vanilla 4-3, I mean 3-4. If you draw area in the late game, although you more than likely are not going to use the enhance effect too often, in case that you absolutely must, you have that option, and it's nice, and if you draw this card and you don't have use in late game, then at least you still get one zero cost fairy, and that is also nice. Now the fairy wisp are interesting because uh, they're zero cost fairies, but they get banished if you play a lot of two cards. If you play two cards on board, however, if you're a smart player and you're playing well, you can use it to your advantage. So if you need to get your card count up for the cards played this turn, but you need board space, then you can play them after you play two cards, and they'll still count as cards played, but they'll be banished so you can keep your board. If you're just trying to play dudes on board so you can buff them, then you can still play your two fairy wisps first. They will not get banished. You've played your one ones and you've upped your cards played this turn. So for example, you can play fairy wisp, fairy wisp, elf song, and they still get buffed. They're not being banished. If you need board space for whatever reason, then you can play them after and get banished. So it's just like a positive. So I like this card a lot. I really, really like this card. It just enables more fairy shenanigans. I like the mechanic of if you've played two cards, do something extra. This card enables that while being pretty good on board and having an enhance that may sometimes matter. And if it never does, then that's fine as well, right? So I really, really like this card. I like this card a lot. Art is also top notch. I like this card a lot. Next, we have Sister of the Sword, 
a Havencraft Bronze, two Black Moon 2 2, good stats, Fanfare given all the follow reward. I mean, it's just boring, man. Like, I guess that's not a bad card. Given Follower's Ward is good, I guess. If Haven wants to play defensive decks, then this is good for that. They can enable that. Um, not a great card, not a bad card. It's just a boring card. Just not too exciting. Like, cards like this to me are not too exciting. But maybe Ward Haven will come a thing and then they will play this. Alright, next we have Endearing Succubus Lilith. A Bloodcraft Gold. It's a 3 play point, 1 5. So, not the best of stats. Uh, fanfare gives your leader the following effect. Whenever your leader takes damage during your turn, recover one play point. But if she dies, you lose the effect. Uh, that's an interesting effect. Like, getting play points is powerful, really, really powerful. Usually, blood takes some damage. But they would like do damage instead or your opponent takes damage. With this card, you can recover play points. If you place on three and you're going first, then it maybe will survive their two drop. And then you can get some value on turn four, get some play points back. It lets you play like a one play point ratio class or something like that. If you play this. Like, 1-5 is going to get e over for free is one of my concerns. If you use this as a 3-7 to fight the board and get the effect, then maybe. It, uh, this card is hard to judge. Like, I think the effect is powerful. I think the stats are weak. This card is, this card is weird. Like, getting play points is strong. But you need self-damage. So, obviously, like, you need to play those cards that have those effects and then is the payoff that good I don't know I mean getting playbooks back is pretty strong but you're playing a 1-5 which is not the greatest stats I really don't know what to think about this card it's interesting for sure though all right next we have treasure map a neutral one play point spell randomly put one of the following cards into your hand forest of dreams or turn a light enchant the library phoenix roost grave desecration flower fed blood fed flower bed pegasus sculpture uh, I don't like this card at all. First of all, it's like super RNG, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, secondly, a lot of these cards are just really, really bad. So, let's say your deck wanted Phoenix Roost for a reason. You don't even guarantee it. Like, if your deck wants Phoenix Roost and you get Blood Fed Flower Bet, then you're just a sad panda, right? It's cool seeing classes be able to access cards from another class, and that leads to some interesting gameplay, I would say. But not like this, right? I don't like this card at all. I don't like this card one bit. Dragon Ren Quake is a Dragoncraft gold spell. Destroy all damaged followers, deal 1 damage to all undamaged followers. This card is interesting. Uh, before, Dragon used to have the quote unquote mechanic of destroying damaged followers. And it looks like they ignored that for a couple uh, expansions. But now they want to bring it back. I think this is not bad. Like, destroying damage followers, I think, is reasonably strong. The only one damage to all on damage followers is, like, sort of okay. This card's power level is, like, so crazy, right? Like, you could destroy, like, a Bahamut and a Mammoth. Or, like, do one enemy damage and kill fairies. I don't know. Or maybe a mix of both. I actually like this card a lot. I don't think you'd play this as a 3 or anything like that. But, like, you have that option if you want to play it. Again, the game will be different if the game becomes more board-centric, aka there's a lot more trades going on. Then the keyword of destroy damage follow becomes more powerful. And if the game does go in that direction, which I think is what they're trying to do, or I would hope so, then a card like this I think is pretty solid. So I like this card. Might not be broken or anything like that, but I, I do like it. Alright, next we have Soul Caller. Soul Caller. A Shadowcraft Silver, 3 Flagman 2 2 2. The lower average stats. Whenever an allied follower, excluding ghost, is destroyed during your turn, summon a ghost. I feel like there's amulets that do this exact same thing. This is a minion, so it's like when you play it, you get a body which is better than an amulet. Of course, they can be killed and then you lose the effect. So, let's say you have a board of like 1-1s. One you play this, you trade your 1-1s, one and for every 1-1 one one that dies, you get a 1-1 one one ghost that can trade against the board. And that's pretty good. And that's sort of 
Shadow deck, I guess this would be a good card. You also get a 2-2. I feel like the amulet that does this is pretty weak. Does the fact that it's a minion and you get a 2-2 make it better? I guess so, right? Again, if board becomes a thing, and I'm going to have a bunch of things on board, I can play this and get, like, uh, goes for everything I trade. That's not bad. It's not broken. It's not bad. It's reasonable. Seems okay. 